Wizard, the Kelly Criterion, let's talk about it. It's really important and I can't believe I've not covered it on the channel before. It's become very, very clear to me also through, you know, talking with Jacques about Hudson and Thames, just how important the Kelly Criterion is. So, you know, right now the time here is 2.37 p.m. I'm going to try and keep this within five minutes because I'm aware a lot of my videos lately have been very long. So I just wanted to save some time, give you something very high value in a very short space of time that you can go and deploy. Position sizing matters. That's the takeaway. If you get this wrong, even if you have an edge, a mathematical edge in your trading strategy, there is a likelihood that you'll lose all your bankroll. And the way I like to think about this, the way I got my head around it is you need to think about your capital as how much buying power do I have? And therefore, if you use up a lot of your buying power, you have less buying power as you get drawdown. And drawdown is inevitable. Nobody has a 100% foolproof trading strategy, not that I'm aware of anyway. So this is absolutely critical. Do not ignore this. This is for everyone. And normally I would tell you if a video wasn't for you. I normally tell you up front, don't bother watching. This is one everybody should watch um, unless they know what the Kelly criterion really is. So John Kelly, I think he worked for Bell Labs and he was doing a project for AT&T, which is how he came up with this. Um, but essentially he came up with an algorithm that you can read about on this blog here. I'll put it in the comments as well. I'll put a link to this blog in the comments. Um, I've stolen the formula from that blog here as well, by the way, and just put it in a spreadsheet to demonstrate it to you. But the idea is based on the edge you have, what percentage of your capital should you place on any given bet or in our case, any given trade? And, you know, in trading, you actually have what's called the, the fractional Kelly criterion, which is where you take a fraction of what the Kelly criterion recommends for you. But I'm just going to do this vanilla style Kelly criterion. Uh, Jacques has actually written a really interesting paper. Um, how and where that's published, I'll get back to you on more details. Um, it might be, you know, in a journal that uh, a lot of you won't have access to. So, you know, that's something I'll get back to. But, um, you know, one of the things to bear in mind as well is when you're using the machine learning side, when you're getting a probability, it might make sense to actually use that probability to decide how much of this Kelly criterion you should position size or not. But just ignore that for now, right? That's just a key takeaway to say that you can get really advanced with this and you can improve your sharp ratio and your returns by doing stuff with this. But if you get this part I'm about to tell you wrong, the likelihood of you using losing all your bankroll is actually really high. And I'm not saying that based on opinion. This is math. I'm going to show you math. Math doesn't lie. So here I've got a spreadsheet in front of me here um, and it's got a random generator. So you'll see here this column C equals rand. Right. So every time I change the spreadsheet or hit save, you'll see all the numbers change. Right. So every time I'm hitting save, these numbers are changing. So it's completely random and it will decide the randomness is basically sorry. The result of the trade being a win or lose a zero or one is based on what you enter up here. So you can enter in what probability you want to simulate. Right. So I'm simulating a trading a trading scenario where the market's totally random and I have no edge. Right. So it's a 50 50. You could even argue it's less than a 50 50 if you're playing tra paying trading fees. But anyway, it's a 50 50. And interestingly enough, this blue icon here is what the Kelly criterion says is the percent of capital we should allocate to a trade. So now I'm running out of time. So I need to to really get into this quick. The Kelly criterion tells you what is the optimal bet size for your trade. And right now it's saying 0%. Why? Because the odds are 50-50. If I look here at this chart, this shows me, right? So the Kelly criterion is the green line. It says 0%. Don't bet anything. If you don't bet anything, your $1,000 initial capital, because we're starting with $1,000. Uh, and actually, you can change that up here. You're starting with $1,000. Um, your $1,000 initial capital at 50-50, why are you bothering? Like, don't trade. Only trade if you have an edge, which I love. Because if you have no edge you have nothing, right? It's really important. You have to have an edge. And so, so this is saying don't trade. Now, what happens if I go and say, okay, well, I have a 1% edge, right? 51 to 49%. Your profit and loss, you can assume is the same. And if you want to know more about that, read through the blog post, or you can play around with these numbers and it will, it'll just work for you. The formulas are built in. So there's, there's four scenarios here. One where you have a 15% of 15% of your capital allocated, one where it's 8% of your capital. These are just hard coded in. You can change these numbers if you want to. The Kelly criterion and 1%. And 
And right now, the Kelly criterion is saying the optimal amount to, to wager here um, is actually 2%. It's exactly 2%. If you have a fifty-one, if you have a one percent edge, bet two percent of your capital. Let's look to the right over here at the chart. What happens when I bet um, two percent? So let me just save this. Right. So everything's changed every time I hit save. By the way, this graph's going to change. But look what happens here. The yellow line, which is one percent, I'm still alive. Right. Actually, let me change the chart again because that's going a bit wacky. It's hard to see the numbers. The yellow line, I've made money. In this example, the Kelly criterion, I've beat the yellow line. The orange line, which is 8%, I've actually lost, slightly lost money, yet slightly break even. The blue line, which is where I bet 15% of my capital, I've lost my entire bankroll. Now, I want you to watch this blue line. I'm going to keep hitting save and refreshing all the data. So again, it's just going to keep pulling random data. I'm going to hit save. You've lost all your money. I'm going to hit save. You've lost all your money. I'm going to hit save. You've lost all your money. I'm going to hit save. You've lost all your money. I'm going to hit save. You've lost all your money. That blue line, every single time, if you are betting 15% of your capital, even if you have an edge in your favor, you are going to lose your bankroll. It's just math. And this is really important. It's important for people like me. Because people like me, we think, you know, I think very much in the cloud sometimes. And I'm thinking, wow, if I have a 1% edge, I should maximize my capital. You know, like that's how my brain works. And my brain is wrong. And so this was very striking to me. And I thought it was a very, you know, a responsible thing to do is to be very strong about my opinion on this. Um, you can see sometimes you can get lucky a bit here. So if you bet over the Kelly criterion, you might end up doing better. But over time, the Kelly criterion will say over time, and this is over a 1000 trades. Right. This is over a thousand trades. Over time, it's the optimal amount. Now, if you you know if you're really smart, you'll you'll you, you'll go into a little bit more here. So there's ways that you can decide how you carve up that Kelly criterion that's going to actually work in your favor. And definitely go and watch the Hudson and Thames video on Kelly criterion. Um, and I'll speak with Jacques as well at some point about his paper. Now, one thing I wanted to show you up here as well is what if I had a 55 percent or sorry 52 percent edge? Let's start with that right? 52% edge, I'm still losing all my money. In fact, even in this example, I've lost money with the Kelly criterion. I've actually lost, I'm still losing. Even with the Kelly criterion here, I'm losing money uh, over and over. So it's not guaranteed, right? A 2% edge is still not guaranteeing you to keep all your capital. And again, this is all random, right? It's, it's based on you have a 52% probability of making money. Now look what happens when I bring this to 55% right? 55%. Now we're rocking. 55%. If you have a 5% edge, right? If you have a 5% edge, these numbers just go off the charts. If you have a 5% edge, use the Kelly criterion. Don't use the blue one. You can still lose all your money. But this, this also, what was interesting about this model to me is if you can get a 4% edge, a 5% edge in the markets, you can absolutely cream it, you can milk it, you can make tons of money, right? So having an edge is everything. But at the end of the day, you don't know if you're going to beat 50 50 odds, right? You can back test and you'll see the video coming out on back testing, you can back test to your heart's content, you don't know if you're going to beat 50 50, right? You, you can forward test. But in reality, what happens is what happens. So don't go and risk more than x percent of your capital. If you know, you have an edge, a, a genuine edge, right? You're doing arbitrage or something like that. You know, arbitrage, all of this goes out the window. If you're doing vanilla arbitrage, the math says, you know, if you if you don't have any risk, there's no prop there's a hundred percent probability of you making money, then bet the maximum liquidity you can and make that money. That's the math for arbitrage. Statistical arbitrage, I would say you need to be careful, right? Statistical arbitrage, apply the Kelly criterion. And that's why I spoke about this in that course. I've gone over time. Hope you found it useful. If you want the link uh, as well, um, just go over to the downloads page. So just go to the downloads at Crypto Wizards, click on this tab or downloads. And here it is over here if you want the Excel file, guys. So for those of you on Crypto Wizards, you can go and grab that there. It's not a super complex Excel file. So guys, even for those of you who've watched this, just put in a random formula in Excel and do some work around it. It's very straightforward. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one.